Welcome back to Andrew Says. Remember, I wouldn't lie to you except for maybe this once. A lot of developments in the Facebook policy change story. And if you haven't heard much about it, we'll get into that first. And then we'll talk about the things that they've actually changed since they've gotten so much negative media coverage over this because it is really silly. But before we get to that, I'd like to encourage you to donate to me on Patreon. Subscribe below. Hit the bell button wherever that is. I think it's in the top left corner. So you get notifications for me because my reach is really being limited and now with all the documents and whistleblowers we know that it's likely on purpose. So the first thing I want to draw your attention to behind me is the original Facebook or sorry the original tweet which had people showing of course what was on Facebook's policies and what they said was that it's okay to break the law. They said that it's okay to call for high severity violence against certain people. Now I'm showing you this tweet from a couple days ago because this includes stuff that they actually ended up taking out. And we'll get into how ridiculous it is. So they say statements intent to commit high severity violence or calls for high severity violence are things you should not post, except unless the target is an organization or individual covered in the dangerous individuals and organizations policy. So what that means is it's not okay to call for high severity violence against certain people, against people, unless it's people that have already been named by Facebook. That's the Milo Yiannopoulos, the Paul Joseph Watsons, the Laura Loomers. If they've been deemed as dangerous people by Facebook, then it's okay to break the law and call for violence against them, which is very interesting. They're advocating and putting it out there that it's okay to break the law regarding these people. Furthermore, or is described as having carried out violent crimes or sexual offenses where the criminal predator status has been established by media reports and market knowledge of news events. So not even if they've been convicted of something, it's if they've been carrying out violent crimes as established by media reports. So that just means somebody just has to report it and then it's okay for people to, you know, make violent threats against them. So that all was still in there as of today. The next one, the next one I want to update to you to show you that it was still in there was a screen grab I got from Tim Pool earlier today. So let me show you that one. So as you can see, same paragraph, um, it continues on organizations and says that all you have to do is get it from an established media report. The final thing that I want to show you is how, what they've changed actually. And what they've gone ahead and changed is they've removed a paragraph from this. So you see where it says it's highlighted in this one. Unless a target is an organization or individual in, uh, covered in the dangerous individuals and organizations policy, then it goes on to say if they've been in media reports. Now, this latest post that I screen grabbed after watching Tim Pool and, and I was trying to compare, I noticed it was different. So where it says organization policy, they've cut it off. So they've now cut off the part where it says, or is described as having carried out violent crimes or sexual offenses, et cetera, et cetera, established by media reports. They've now stopped it at individuals and organizations policy. So it's still okay to target people for violence and call for violence, which is against the law in America, Canada, the United Kingdom. But it's okay to do it for Milo, Alex Jones, Paul Joseph Watson, anybody who's been banned or on their list. It's okay to call for violence against them, but I guess they've decided since all the bad press has come out that they're not allowed to do it based on just news reports, or maybe they'll put that back in, but I found it very interesting that they took it out. Now, people have been leaving out, which is something I'll give Tim Pool credit for mentioning, is that they're also banning Antifa organizational pages, I suppose you could call it. And so they're doing what I think, again, is the, is the sweeping thing where they ban everybody on both sides to make it seem as though they're not biased at all or they're not doing anything suspicious. But the thing is, what they've done in the past actually contradicts what they're saying that they've always done. They say that they've always taken people off their site which call for violence and stuff like that. But that's not actually true because Antifa's been on there for a long time. Louis Farrakhan was on there for a long time. And these are people who directly called for violence against different people. So it's kind of weird because there's evidence you can go back to when they 
first stated how they're going to ban Laura Loomer, Paul Joseph Watson, etc., and saying that they've always banned people who called for violence, even though there's evidence to the contrary, because until now, they've left off Antifa and these sorts of pages where they're calling for violence. Steven Crowder, if you've ever seen his videos, where it's on Facebook where these people are saying, go, go attack them, here's where they are right now, here's a picture of their production van. So it's contradictory in that way, but at the same time they're saying that we've always stopped people from calling for violence against people, but now they're saying it's okay to do it against certain people. So it's very contradictory, and it seems like there's a, a, a lengthy stream now of things like this coming out from Facebook, from Google, where I don't know if people were sitting on this for a while, or it's just bad timing, but... The whistleblowers are coming out, and the funny thing is this isn't even a whistleblower. This is Facebook's own terms. And keep in mind, they're the biggest, still the biggest social media platform there is, and they also own Instagram. There's over 2 billion people on Facebook. I don't know if you've ever heard the story of Facebook dropping cell phones with free data and Facebook already installed into it into places like India to up their user base. Not to mention you can be banned for having photos on Instagram with people that are banned from there. So not only are you allowed to call for death or violence against certain people, but you're not allowed to take pictures with them and have them on there, and you're not allowed to speak fondly of them. You're allowed to speak poorly of them and call for their death or call for violence against them, and that's okay with Facebook. So the most remarkable thing here, Facebook, instead of just saying nothing at all, they're saying, yes, it's okay to break the law in regards to calling for violence against certain people. Stunning and brave, isn't it?